kick us off and whenever you're ready, Alex. Oh, I was waiting for an introduction or a drum roll or something. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no that's fine. We can just Randy do it. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll do it. I'd like to welcome everyone here, and I'd really like you to uh, or give a big warm welcome to Alex, who was our um, giving, kind-hearted um, core team member who is going to be providing you with a training today, or at least sharing the screen with you today. So let's all welcome Alex with a big hand of applause. <laughs> well, thank you, Brandy. I appreciate that. No. Um... <clears throat> want to thank um, you for your time today as we walk through the um, process that um, the core partners have agreed to in submitting the local plans. Um, this process is utilizing Iowa grants, so I am not an expert in that, but um, we did um, craft um, the forms based upon the guidance that we gave. The template that was used um, has been replicated into this electronic format and we'll be walking through those forms today. Um, plenty of time for questions um, and, um, and directions if you have them um, as we go through this process, but I will be sharing the screen so of that process as we walk through it so that um, you can review this video and um, hopefully use it um, to help you in that process. But um, really it's aimed at those that are going to be ultimately submitting the plan. Um, I assume that a lot of work has already started and is underway in the development of the local plan. And you might be using several different formats of collecting feedback and um, input from your different partners in what is going into the content of your local plan. This really is a way to um, upload that finished product upload the final pieces of your plan and the questions that um, were assigned in the template. Um, any comments, Michelle, um, before, before we go into the Iowa grant system itself? No, I don't have any. Okay, great. Um, so iowagrants.gov will take you to this, this page, the welcome page here. Um, what is required is a, a user to be logged into the system. And a user um, can do that or should be able to do that um, by simply adding a new user. Um, the system will automatically check to see if you have an email associated with um, Iowa grants. Um, if you do, um, there is an ability there to, um, to request a forgotten username, um, password, um, or to create an account. Um, when you do create an account, um, it will ask you um, what you would like to be associated with. And when you select from there, there is an option there for Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Um, by selecting that, um, the system will generate an email that a new user is requesting access. And I believe those requests go to, to Wendy. Um, I could be wrong, but um, it goes and um, approval is then granted. And with your credentials, you're then able to log into Iowa Grants. Um, once into the Iowa Grants, I'll walk through again the process to use in creating um, creating your, your local plan submission. So each area will need to have at least one person who's able to register or be registered in Iowa Grants um, to be able to complete this task. Um, again, registration instruction is included from the welcome page and the process to, um, to register or to create that account is, is managed through um, the AA system of the state. Once your credential is verified and, and created, you can go into the system and then start um, by inputting that information. Um, <clears throat> You'll see a page like this once, um, once you're through the, um, the registration process. And each program, each, each local area will need to go into the funding opportunities um, to start the, the grant process. Um, sometimes in the funding opportunities, um, and I understand that the local plan isn't a funding opportunity, it's a generic term for um, all, where all forms are, are accessed. 
um, but it's going to be important to um, to go to and find the um, local plan. And this is alphabetized. Um, so you'll be looking for, and you can sort by number. Um, so 415-314 is the number associated with um, the application and the form. And um, once you um, click on this, you'll be able to start the process of creating um, your plan within Iowa Grants. So any questions or again, um, don't hesitate to, to raise a hand, um, open your, your mic and ask questions as we go through this. Okay. The form takes you to and has set the application deadline of October 1st at 1259 p.m. as it was indicated in the um, guidance document. Um, information here is pulled from um, heavily from that to guidance document about the background, about the vision and strategies of the um, state um, unified state plan, as well as the timeline, the submission details that was included in there. As far as attachments, um, you have both the um, Word doc and the PDF of that guidance and template that's been provided to you. Um, you have the ability to review that. Also click on the links that will take you to the ePolicy website that further defines the local plan and the requirements around the local plan. Um, each area will only need to um, create one um, submission. Um, I went in here and already tested it, but I'll show you the process of um, starting a new application. This is a process that each, each of you will, will follow in, in creating this. Um, you do have the ability to um, include other um, registered applicants. Um, if you have other people within your local workforce development board who are already members of the um, Iowa grants or have an account in there and will be involved in some way of um, inputting data um, by associating with them, um, by going in, finding their name, um, clicking shift or control. If there's multiple individuals that you'd like to include, um, you could have a team that is dedicated to entering information on your local plan in here. Otherwise, it can be just an individual who has been identified by the local board to do this, um, this task. You provide a title um, for your local plan. And um, again, I would suggest indicating the, um, the local area that the plan is covering. And um, for, for this purposes, we're just going to label it as a test um, for, for our, our ability to review this. You'd indicate your organization. Um, so because you associated yourself with the um, Workforce, um, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, um, you'd be able to indicate that. Or if there's another organization that you're representing, it would be reflected in this drop-down menu and you can choose that. It's important to note that everything that has a star, a red star asterisk is a required field. Um, so each of those need to be completed in order to um, save and move on and progress to the next. Um, so even if you're not prepared um, to upload an attachment or to provide a response, um, sometimes it will be necessary to, um, to enter text or to um, attach a blank form so that you can come back to it. If there is um, things that um, not quite ready in the form to complete, um, so keep that in mind as, as you go through it, um, what needs to be uploaded. But many of you will already have the local plan complete. Um, you've had it out for public comment. Um, so a lot of this is just inputting this into an electronic format. Questions at this time? The information that you've completed here it goes into general information. And when you um, go to the application form, you'll see that you already have one of the activities, one of the forms completed. 
um, you know, track some when when that was done. And the goal is to have each one of these checked off. When each one is checked off, you can preview um, to make sure that it's correct, that all the information has been added um, as, as it pertains to your local plan, and then submit. Um, the key goal here is to be able to submit and to be able to submit within the deadline. Again, the deadline is reflected here for the application. The only thing that is different than what you would have received in the um, plan and guidance would be this minority impact statement. Um, the governor's office requires that um, anything that's used um, or is using um, the state system does provide, um, and they, they give the rationale here um, by Iowa code what's, what's being required, um, that you do provide um, a, a short response um, to um, whether or not what you're submitting or what you're proposing has an impact, a minority impact. Um, so you have the opportunity to um, select yes, um, provide what that positive impact is, um, who's positively impacted by, by your plan, and um, what that will look like and provide acknowledgement. Um, that this information is, um, is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Um, so again, this is a universal form that's required by the governor's office um, for anyone that's using um, the, the state system. Once that information is complete, you'll be able to save it, mark it as complete, and have another check mark here um, to show that um, that form has been reviewed, information has been collected, um, and you're satisfied with that information. And um, once you're ready with everything, you'll be able to submit. Any questions about the minority impact statement? And I apologize if there's things in the chat that I'm not catching. Alex, there's nothing in the chat, but I will keep an eye on it for you. Well, thanks, Wendy. I appreciate that. Sure. Moving okay. into the next three forms, these forms um, are reflective exactly as they are in your guidance, the, the guidance and the template that you receive from the state. So form one, two, and three are reflective of the three separate sections that the plan um, covers. Section one being the infrastructure. This is where you provide um, the details as outlined here, A through J, um, and you do that again in electronic format. Um, you provide um, the name of the local area. So if I'm putting this in for East Central, I would indicate that. I would also go through and highlight which counties East Central Iowa is serving. Um, again, as some of your areas might cover um, a portion of counties, not the full county themselves, um, be sure to include that county if it is a portion um, so that um, it's, it's representative of your entire, local, your entire local area. We've provided ways for you to upload and attach things so that it's not all about copying and pasting your content. Um, because we realize that some of the format um, doesn't carry over. So when we ask for a roster or a full list of subcommittee members, um, you'd go in here and choose the file and it'll pull up your, your computer and um, it'll indicate where, where you can find that file, um, give it a name, attach it, and then, um, and then save it. Um, so by choosing a file, um, that file is then associated with um, your application. And when you submit it, that file um, comes over electronically as well. So it's a secure um, portal um, by which that information is, is being shared. All the questions here are again related or exact um, copied over from the um, local plan template. Um, so there is no um, additional questions being asked in infrastructure. Um, 
It's asking again um, your opportunity to upload the office locations, provide a description of the process used to draft the local plan. Um, text areas here can be expanded. Um, so as you enter them and you want to go in and, and check to make sure there's a little, little opportunity here, a little arrow that you can draw to make that text box bigger for you so that you can see the full, full content. It expands to um, and I might get grief over this, but um, there is ability to add um, a short novel if you'd like. Um, so about five, yeah, half a million characters. Um, so there should not be any, any limitation on your ability to add content. Um, if um, your local board really um, wanted to expand upon um, some of the questions that are asked of the local plan, and don't feel like you can't um, include that. There is a addition section, additional section to, um, to, to this form. And this is relative to the requirement um, for local areas to upload um, their public comments that they receive during the required period of, um, of having a public comment. Um, so again, um, being able to upload that, and you can upload that um, as a PDF, as a Word document, as an Excel spreadsheet. Um, it takes pretty much whatever format that, um, that you have for a file um, to, to upload that. Um, so we, re we require um, you to um, upload um, the comments received. Um, you'll notice here that I did not uh, make a requirement of the two other um, upload um, or attachment opportunities. And that's if um, any actions uh, were taken um, by the local board to resolve or to respond to the public comments received, um, mainly because if you didn't receive any, you wouldn't have any actions to take. Um, but um, if there were um, comments received and action was taken, if modifications to the plan were made, if responses were given, to say, yes, we're going to make that uh, adjusted change or no, we're not going to make that adjusted change, um, then an attachment should be uploaded at this point. We also provided for the local areas to upload um, a final published plan. Um, so we know that there might be plans that um, have formatting um, issues that um, Again, you've, you've polished it, you have refined it, you've saved it as a PDF, you plan to upload it to your, your web page to make it um, accessible for, for others. Um, we're giving you that opportunity to, um, to also include it in your submission with the local plan, the complete, um, I guess, saved version of, of, that, of that plan um, at this time. Um, it's optional for you to do that, um, but um, again, we feel that you probably have already have a, a finished plan that you plan to um, include, and um, attaching it here would be would is the is the place to do that. Hey, Alex, this is Kim Wilson from Western Iowa. Forgive me for being a little new on the whole workforce plan and all the things, but um, and I have not done this before, so. Can you kind of talk about, or anybody on the call talk about, like what kind of public comments we might be able to expect? And then if somebody, you know, do we, and then maybe my second question is, is somebody, I don't know, I don't even know if this would even happen, but, you know, Susie Cream Cheese says, hey, by the way, you have a typo. Do I have to turn that in as a public comment if it's just a, like. A grammatical or yeah. a, a correction to that. Um, really, it's, it's best to collect and to be able to reflect that you have all public comments. Um, so screening out, even if it's a grammatical or formatting issue, um, it, it just makes sense to include all of it. Um, whether or not you've taken action, that action could be um, as simple as um, corrected. Um, so at the state level, I can speak to, um, and others can chime in, um, about the process that we've gone through is um, dropping those comments into a, a spreadsheet. Um, so here's the comments on one side, these are the actions that we've taken on in another column there. Um, so that um, yes, you, even if it's, if, you know, if it's a comment that um, 
they, they think it's spelled wrong, but it's actually right. You can say no correction made, or if it is in fact a typo, correction made. And that's the extent of, of the action. Um, but to the first point, I would um, make sure that all public comments are, um, are collected. And no matter how, how big or small that they are, that um, you upload um, those public comments as part of that process. But um, others feel free to um, join in in their experiences with receiving and responding to public comments. I'm just wondering like what kind of comments we can expect. Um, I'm sitting here trying to remember some of the comments we received when we did this for the state plan. And quite frankly, we didn't receive too terribly many comments and that was a 350 page document. So mostly it's just giving um, the constituents a chance to, to put their opinion on it, right? You might say, we're gonna require everybody to wear red shirts and somebody might comment, well, I want them to wear blue shirts. You know, I mean, it can be really anything. Um, and just because you receive a comment does not mean you're required to make that change either, right? But you're required to consider the information that they're giving you and um, document that response. So I think it's difficult to come up with specific examples of, because it really could be anything. Um, but I think in our experience, we have not received a ton of public comment. So I don't okay. know if that helps, Kim, sorry. No, that does help. Thank you, Michelle. Right, I, I would say that there are some advocacy groups that um, are um, and do um, spend some time in reviewing our plans. Um, those with um, disability advocacy work um, could, could certainly review that and provide um, valuable feedback in saying, well, what, what conditions are being made to ensure accessibility issues? Um, so, so questions like that could, could be generated. Um, so there could be um, what data was being used to, to draw and determine this, um, questions around the, the premise of the, the data being used and developing the local plan and, and the services that, that were pro being provided. Um, there could be other comments from community organizations that might not have been as, as heavily involved in, in the development of the plan that might, now that it's being public commented, um, might have opinions on. Um, so Michelle's right, there's no, no end to the list of, of who could, um, but um, it's, it's not, not a very long list of those that would, so. Okay, questions about form one. Well, if no, then you're about third way done. So congrats on that and um, not, much, not much more to do, right? Form two is related to strategic planning elements. Um, these are those areas that we talked about, about the economic analysis, workforce analysis. Um, again, the vision, the strategies related to, um, to what you have at the local, local level developed for, for your board and for your area. Um, so we've provided an opportunity here for you to input narrative um, related to um, those, those areas, as well as the ability to attach all data samples, graphics, tables um, that support that narrative as an attachment. Um, we know that um, attaching tables or trying to input data tables into um, Iowa grants is cumbersome and it often doesn't look pretty. Um, so rather than trying to force that, that square peg into a round hole, um, use the upload feature. Um, so if you relied heavily on um, an IWD um, labor shed um, data report um, for determining your workforce analysis, um, upload that um, as, as part of your, your documentation. And those, these uploads um, can include multiple sources. So if you use the labor shed and you used um, reports from, from ONET and um, reports from, um, I'll just throw it out there, from Department of Education or something like that, save them as one PDF, um, combine them into one document, and the size doesn't matter. The system can take um, 
the, the biggest size that, that you can throw at it and we'll save that um, file as one file, then that's related to your economic analysis, your workforce analysis. So um, instead of trying to upload four or five documents, merge them into one document, save it as one PDF, save it as one Word document. Um, if it is a Word document um, and your other documents are PDF, then convert that to a PDF and merge it into one. Um, label it and attach it here as it relates to, um, to your response. And again, there's no limit to, to the page numbers. Um, those that are going to be reviewing um, this are, are anxious to look at all of your pages of documents. I did get myself taken off the review committee, right? In your dream. <laughs> No, that wasn't the deal. I had to do this piece and not do the reviews. That's, that's pretty much how I remember it. So this section, again, focuses on the strategic planning elements. Each question has its own space for a narrative to be collected and for your ability to upload um, data samples. Um, we anticipate that there will be um, attachments um, that, that you'll want to um, include on that. Um, I notice here that um, I did make each of those areas for attachments a requirement. Um, I will go back in um, and remove that. Um, I don't want you to feel like if I don't have an attachment for strategies, how we came up with strategies or how we came up with a vision, um, that you have to put something in there. Um, so I'll go back and um, if you're okay with that, I'll go back and remove that as a requirement um, for you. Um, so then you can just provide a narrative. If your strategies is just a narrative, then that's all that you have to provide. Alex can put in the chat, yes, please, to remove that. <laughs> Okay, that's, 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 that's good. Okay. And again, if you're working through this and um, you still have um, a couple PDFs that need to be merged in here, um, you can certainly um, um, put in something that, that holds that space for you. Um, and um, yeah. And if you're not ready for the content in here, but the narratives will be required, um, but you're not quite ready to enter the workforce analysis um, because it is required, you can just add, um, add something here or, or do it in, in all caps so it draws your attention to it that, that you still need to go back and complete it. If all of this data was complete, um, you again would mark it as complete. That would get you your little check mark um, in your forms, and um, then you'd be two thirds of the way done. Um, so you would just need to go to section three. Section three is the Iowa Work System Coordination, and by all means, the, um, the lengthiest section that, that you have in your local plan. It includes all the questions that are outlined here, um, and it gives you an opportunity to provide a narrative. In some spaces, there is an attachment, um, such as the first area there where it's asking about um, you to include the identification of the programs that are included in the system. Um, that's, that's obviously referencing your ability to upload a document um, rather than narratively try to list that out. So um, provided that, that opportunity for you. Um, each of the, the questions, while they might have multiple sections, um, they only have one narrative box for you. Um, so the vision was that as you respond um, to those questions, um, you would do so in a response that's that's um, inclusive of all of those elements of, um, for example, question 17 there, um, how training services will be provided through the use of ITAs. Um, you would be responding to A, B, and C. So it would be one narrative box 
um, if you did separate um, them out into those separate sections, you can still do so in the um, in the narrative box, um, but it's just one box for you to complete. And as indicated before, there is a lot of space there for you to add content to. Space should not be a limit for you. Um, so each area here correlates with the questions that you do have on your um, on your guide and template um, to try to help keep you on, on track with what needs to be completed. Um, some of the questions here in the headers needed to be abbreviated um, just because of space limitations of, of character counts that I have or that the system has for that space. Um, but if so, the full question is, um, is explained or provided in the um, in the box below, um, just again, to ensure that you're responding um, correctly to the right question that, that you have in your template and guide that you've been working on. So again, these are narrative boxes that you can expand out. Um, the subheadings, the, um, the small text here are, is the same text that was included in your, in your guide, just as a reference point. Um, it'll also help us um, when we're building the and reviewing the documents um, to identify, well, what were we looking for or what were we hoping to capture in, um, in their response here. Um, so again, it's just included there as a guide, um, but you're really responding to these um, federally required questions um, that, that are included here. So this does go on for um, 20 some questions. Um, it's the, the lengthiest section that you have and I can understand where you might not um, complete it all in one setting. Um, again, um, copy, um, paste um, does work. Um, so if you're moving from a Word document into this, um, it, it, it'll take your text. I would review it to make sure that um, formatting issues, you're, you're comfortable with that. Um, if you do want to, um, to get fancy with some things, um, this system is based on HTML code. Um, so if you want um, to create headers within your narratives or to create spaces um, between your paragraphs so it's not seen as one large chunk of text, um, then I would encourage you to um, like me, self-teach yourself some HTML code, and um, that that will, um, will will allow you to do that within your your narrative here. Otherwise, it'll be copied over as one large large block of text for each question, and again, allow us to then um, review it as as such. There is no points in the review for for prettiness. Is that is that what we agreed to? That's correct. Yes. There's good. Good. Well, yeah. There's um, an opportunity here for um, again to upload um, executed cooperative agreements, and uh, again looking at um, combining those agreements into one um, complete file. Um, so if you have two or three um, that are related to your MOU partners, or you see this as your MOU that you want to include as a cooperative agreement, um, but you also have another partnership with um, someone um, within your local area, combine that into one file and then choose that file and um, attach it um, to, to your application, to, to, your, to your plan here. Um, you'll notice that there's um, a skip between 14 and 17. Um, those were the two questions that were not required at this time. Um, so as, as you go through, um, again, follow along with the numbers of, of your um, responses and make sure that those numbers align with the, um, the question in the, in the form here as you're providing those responses. The last um, area here is your assurances. Um, your assurance that um, by submitting this local plan, um, the board um, has established all local policies and procedures required by the State um, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, um, following the policies and federal legislation 
that all local policies are made available on the local area website. Um, so checking that box um, assures us of that. And then you would click save. If all the information was entered and you're happy with it, you mark it as complete and go to the application form. If you by chance um, accidentally mark something as complete, um, Um, say you you went in and you provided some responses um, to to these, and you you said, "Well, I'll get back to that to that later." Um, and um, you again accidentally um, click that. Um, it's okay; it doesn't close it out for you. Um, you're still able to go in, and um, as as I've done here. Um, As I've done here, um, I've added some things. Um, they're not the things that I want. Um, go into edit mode, and um, that will allow you to go in and, and take those things out and put in what you want in that section. Um, so nothing's final until you click that submit button. Um, so you don't have to worry about how do I get back into that. You can always go back into the um, into the individual question and um, edit it and make changes to it. So um, clicking on the edit mode allows you to, um, to go back into that form and, and make those changes. Okay, um, again, um, once you have check boxes for each one of those things, um, and you've had a chance to, um, to, to review it. Um, you can always um, take a copy, um, print off a copy. So um, typically I would go into the preview mode so that I can see everything that's been entered as one. Um, I would um, print it as a PDF, um, not because this is typically what would get posted or is getting posted to your website, but again, confirmation for you, for your own peace of mind that um, I did complete everything, everything's um, um, answered, um, and I feel comfortable with that um, before clicking submit. Um, it's not required for you to do that. Again, that's something that I, I do or I would do um, if I was on your, your end of things. Um, just again, making a, a screenshot, if you will, that everything, all the, um, all the responses in one, one page or one, one view is, is complete. And then clicking Submit. Um, you can't um, submit unless everything's um, marked as complete. Um, so if you accidentally hit that button and um, you're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's not the end of the world, um, the system will stop you. Um, so that um, you're, you're not submitting it until everything's checked here. So it's kind of a, a way to, to check and balance as you go through the process. But again, uh, many of you will, will have your, um, your plans done. It's a matter of moving it into an electronic format by which the core partners can do and conduct a review. Um, so questions, I feel like I, Hope I didn't talk too quickly or go through it. Um, familiarity kind of, kind of makes me feel like it's 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 um it's a system that that you can you can work with, but um, questions. Did I miss anything in the chat or Nothing in the chat. I, the only thing I would add, just to be clear, is this is not where you would post for public comment. This is where you will submit your final draft that you want to be reviewed by the state team. So this is not something that has to be completed by that August 15th suggested, you know, draft of your local plan being posted for public comment by any stretch of the imagination. So um, just, just to clarify that. And I will get the recording of this and post the recorded video on 
the state board website where the other local planning training documents and recordings are so that you'll have access to it going forward when it, when it is time for you to be ready to, um, to submit your final draft in the system. Excellent point, Michelle. And and yes, I mean it's it's not intended for that. Um, and um, questions related to um, to putting it in um, or questions related to access, we can certainly um, handle those. It's it's better to ensure that you have access to Iowa grants and can find this and open it up. Um, I would encourage you to to remember maybe this number. Um, to, to help you find it the first time. But after that, um, once you log in and, and go into to the system, you go into My Applications. And um, it pulls, pulls it up for you. Um, so this is a list of all your um, applications that you're, you're currently working on, um, that you're in editing mode with, um, so you don't have to go back through and um, find um, where that opportunity is. Once you've started, once you've opened it up and you've entered in general information related to that, you go into your current applications and it'll be there for you um, for the duration until you um, submit it. Um, once you submit it, then it'll change status and be submitted and then um, it'll be put under review later. Um, so once you're in there, you just um, click on the proposed title and that'll take you back to, um, to your forms um, to work on and to complete and to submit. I have a question. Okay. Um, so you start the application and then, um, and the first general section where you um, list who is going to have, who is going to be contributing to the application. So if you list multiple people there, will they automatically see that application in their My Application once it is started? So, you know, like I work with uh, Miranda Swafford, if she started it, and listed me, I would be able to see myself see it in mine if I went in to add stuff to it. Correct. Um, okay. So you would only need one application. It's not um, multiple people creating their own application and trying to work on it. So in that in that first point, if you do have multiple people who have or will be contributing to um, adding content into your local plan, that's the place where you would add individuals. Um, so if I go back into um, the applications that I created and I go back into my, my test ones and I go into my general information and I say, well, I need to edit it because now I have, um, let's see, I want to include Jennifer Adams as a contributor and I want to include um, Mary. These people will be very surprised if I saved this and sent it to them. Um, and, and Carolyn Cobb. These are all going to be contributors for that. Um, when they log into their um, account, um, you're absolutely right. They go into my applications and it will be there for them. Um, the project title that you've given it, um, they'll be able to go in and, and make that, um, make any changes that they need to um, for, for the grant, for, for the local plan. Make sure when you add those that you um, save it. Um, otherwise, it, it won't save and, and they won't have that. Um, so that was a great question. Others?
Well, I know that we scheduled a lot more time for this, but um, if you're like me, I've got two other two o'clock meetings that that um, I'm trying to squeeze in. So I'm not above I'm handing over more time um, to to you. We're all busy, and um, but I want to make sure that um, you feel fairly comfortable with the um, the application, what you're seeing in the forms, and I will go in and make those um, adjustments to the required. Um, where where I indicated um, for that attachment, um, so that um, programs can can choose um, to include it or or not. Um, I think it um, definitely aids when you're talking about um, economic analysis and workforce analysis, but it might not make sense when you're talking about your strategies and your vision. So I'll just go ahead and um, make all of those um, attachments as optional for for programs. I don't really have a, maybe it's a question, but first of all, Alex, you know, thank you again. You did a phenomenal job of organizing this so that it basically matches exactly to the template that we've given you. So hopefully that makes it easier for you all to keep it organized and fill out. I think I have more of a suggestion, not having been a person who's worked in here before. I think the system is pretty intuitive, but, you know, I would recommend you don't wait until 430 on the first to start this process of entering your information because it might be a little bit more time consuming in the beginning than you expect, right? Um, and obviously we are all here by we, I uh, mean Alex and Wendy and probably Carrie because they've worked in the system before, um, but we're all here to help answer any questions. So you can always reach out. Okay, is Brandy going to bring us home, or are we are we just going to dismiss by by Rose? It's it's all good for me. I think this time Rose would be fine. I think they've they've had enough. <laughs> well, hopefully, it hasn't been overwhelming. Um, again, trying to ensure that we're aligned with the um, guidance and the form that you've been working on, or or you've had a chance to at least look at. Um, so those those questions you will find exactly as worded um, in in these in these forms for you and Iowa grant. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much.